Our version of the work kinetic energy theorem is only valid for linear motion so far. If you remember when we computed delta k and set it equal to work net, k was the linear kinetic energy, one half mv squared, and work net was the sum of the different works done by the different forces. Of course, if you have rotational motion, you have to update delta k equals work net by including, rather than one half mv squared, one half i omega squared, the rotational kinetic energy, and instead of the work done by each force, you want the work done by the torque created by each force. So you still write delta k equals work net in the condensed form, but with the understanding that you're applying it to rotational motion, and so delta k is going to be one half i omega final squared minus one half i omega initial squared, and then work net is going to be work of torque due to F1 plus work of torque due to F2, and so forth. So it's the same statement, you just have to be careful what type of motion you have so that you use the proper quantities on the left and the right hand side. So let's see how that works on a simple example. Let's consider this barn door here viewed from above, and it's hinged on the left hand side, and you are going to open it by pushing with the force F1 on the right edge of the door, and you follow through, right? You walk with the door as you apply the force, F1. That allows you to say that F1 is constant in direction, and we are going to assume that it's also constant in magnitude. It stays equal to F1. We don't have a value, but we'll just call it F1. And it stays equal to F1 from um, the initial position, which is right here, all the way to when it hits the wall right there. So we are trying to derive the angular speed omega final of the barn door once it reaches the wall right here. So this is going to be when the door hits the wall. So we're going to do that by applying delta k equals work net. And remember that you write delta k, you write work net, and then you set the two equal to each other. So delta k is easy. I mean, delta k is the change in rotational kinetic energy because we have rotational motion, right? So it's one half, we have the moment of inertia of the door, I door, omega final squared, minus one half, I door, omega initial squared, which is actually zero because the door starts at rest, and so you just have one half I door omega final squared. That's your change in rotational kinetic energy. And we need to set that equal to the net work. All right, now the only force that we have that causes a rotation about the hinge on the left hand side is F1, and this is viewed from above, so it's the only force responsible for this motion. And work net is therefore going to be work of the torque created by F1. Right? So again, there's one force, therefore one torque, and therefore one work done by that torque. And that is going to be equal to, because um, F1 is constant in magnitude and direction relative to the door, torque of F1 times delta theta, right? Remember that if the torque is constant, you can compute the work that it does by simply multiplying torque by delta theta. You just need to figure out if it's positive or negative, and it will be positive if the force helps the object rotate, negative if the force opposes the rotation of the object. Now here, F1 is the reason why the door rotates in the first place, and therefore it's a positive torque and we have torque of F1 times delta theta, where torque of F1 is going to be length L F1 sine of 90, we're computing torque with respect to the hinge, by the way, multiplied by delta theta, which is actually pi over 2, because um, the door just rotates through. I guess I should have written it, but visually it's pretty obvious that it's pi over 2 radians. Now careful that you need to use radians, right? It's kind of confusing because I plugged in degrees into sine here, sine of 90. Really should have written sine of pi over 2. But 
delta theta, there's no choice. You can't argue that. Delta theta has to be in radians. So if it makes more sense, just do everything in radians. I know when it comes to sine and cosine, a lot of you prefer degrees, just, um, you know, you're more used to it. But one way or the other, what you get here is pi L F1 over 2. And these two quantities are equal by the work kinetic energy theorem. And so if I write that delta K is equal to work net, then I get 1 half I door omega final squared is equal to pi L F1 over 2. Now this is going to clean up a bit. Twos are going to go away. And we're going to get omega final squared is equal to pi L F1 divided by I door. And we're going to square root that to get omega final in the end. So we're going to find that omega final is square root of pi L F1 divided by I door, the moment of inertia of the door. Thanks for watching this video. We created Cogburst Academy to help you save time by focusing on what matters most when studying for exams. If you'd like to learn how Cogburst Academy can personally help you improve your grades, check us out at cogburstacademy.com and send us an email if you have any questions. We'd love to help you.